Kentucky shows up with two SEC Player of the Year candidates, the elder statesman Nick Richards, great rim protector, but very few, if any, in the SEC have played better in the last couple months than Emmanuel Quickly, the sophomore guard, as we welcome you to Super Tuesday, presented by Progressive. Kentucky runs into a game that a couple of months ago looked like it couldn't possibly be a pitfall. But Texas A&M has played very good basketball, winners of three straight to move to eight and six in the league. And this is definitely a landmine tonight for the visiting Kentucky Wildcats. Thanks for joining us. Jason Benetti, Jimmy Dykes, Marty Smith will join us in a moment. Uh, for A&M, what do you got to do to make this thing go tonight? You know, it's an interesting matchup for Kentucky tonight because you just look at A&M and you break them down in two areas. Their talent out of 14 teams, some are down here around 11 or 12, to be honest with you. Their collective heart, especially over the last couple of months, they tried up here at the top of the SEC. Their collective heart, average with their talent, puts them somewhere right in the middle of this SEC race. If you're Kentucky tonight, Jason, you're out talented, Texas A&M, the heart factor, the fight, the want to, the will of Texas A&M is tremendous right now, and Kentucky must match that. Where are you on that continuum? I'm down here at the bottom of both. You, yeah. by the way, flying okay. overnight with a red eye from Major League Baseball, top in talent, top in heart. Hard to beat your combination. Oh, that's so very kind, and the bribery once again works with Jimmy Dykes. <laughs> Texas A&M and Kentucky ready to go. Reed Arena filling in as Josh Nebo and Nick Richards are ready to jump, and Richards sends it back, and it's taken in by Quentin Jackson. That is a dandy of a start for Texas A&M. All right, we told you about Richards and quickly. Tyrese Maxey, Ashton Hagens, who's turned the ball over a little bit more than John Calipari would like, although he is still a lockdown defender and one of many point guard types on this Kentucky roster. Jason, this is an AM defense. It's going to overload the ball side of the floor. Kentucky, they're going to have trouble, I think, getting all the way to the rim. The pull up shot early by Kentucky will be huge. This AM team, which opened three and five, has gotten more from Savion Flag in his first year under Buzz Williams. Wendell Mitchell, the senior from Rockdale, Texas. And that's another good beginning for Texas AM. That team. is Mitchell. Well, Jason, they've really struggled to score the ball AM has all year long, with exception of the last three, like you talked about, 78 points a game. And it's come substantially near the rim. They're yep. not a fantastic three-point shooting team, certainly. It's 28% for the year. But this guy has been outstanding, Josh Nebo, who was denied that time. AM embraces ugly in terms of how they play. And Nick Richards. If he outruns your big for 40 minutes, you're in trouble because that dude gets out in front of the play as well as any big guy in college ball. How good is he at positioning himself early in a possession? Yeah, Jason, he, he's tremendous. You see a lot of good big guys in the Big Ten, by the way. But this kid, his improvement is right there with Luka Garza in terms of from last year to this year. Savion flag for three. And for an A&M team that comes in 348th in the country in three-point percentage, they're shooting it well right now. That one goes down for Quickly, his first bucket off of 26 on Saturday against Florida. Quickly is uh, averaging the league best 1.6 points per field goal attempt. That leads the SEC. I think he's the best offensive player overall that this league has. Johnny Juzang started calling him killer because of some big shots he's made as Hagens steps in to end up at the rim and he left it short, but an offensive rebound. Sets up quickly for another. All triggered off the defensive hot hands of Ashton Hagens, who, by the way, misses as many shots at the rim as any point guard in college ball, but he's so active defensively and quickly has seen a big rim early. Six in a row in the win column for Kentucky. They haven't lost since that game against Auburn, and another intercept. E.J. Montgomery is hit, and he'll go to the line. As we check in and say hello for the first time with Marty Smith, well-dressed as always. 
Thank you, Jason. Good evening, everyone. John Calipari reminded his team today that when you play at the University of Kentucky, there are no breaks. Every single game is a war, and if you relent, you will get beaten. He also said, yes, it's good to have big goals. The problem with you guys right now is your goals are misguided. Forget the stat sheet. Play to your training. It's not about the volume of points or assists. It's about doing the right things at the right time and being fundamentally disciplined when we tell you to do them so you can achieve those goals. I thought Marty was talking to us, honestly. I'm fired up to achieve my goals tonight. Well, I'm, I'm trying to play to my training. Yeah. In terms of your artistry? Well, we've already gone down that yeah. path. Well, and Kentucky's training is get that ball around the rim, sit down in the stands, guard your butt off, communicate, be a juggernaut defensively. That's who they are. Wow, that is a long three, and Savion Flag has hit a couple of them. And AM goes right to their one, two, two, three quarter court press. If Kentucky can ever find the backside of their press offense, it will be a drive waiting to happen. Nobody around wow. quickly, and he has nine early. But the closeout is not there, so quickly's wide open on the back play for the backside bomb. You would imagine tonight that if AM is going to win this game, it's going to need to be in the 60s. It, yes, absolutely. The, the AM. Averages 19 seconds per offensive possession, Jason. They try to slow and grind the game down and embrace ugly basketball. They know who they are. They don't run away from it. Long possessions, get to that free throw line, defend their tail off. What's up, Buzz Williams? How about the job he's done to Tremendous. keep this team afloat after a rough start as quickly gets bumped. No shot, though, as Mitchell got into him. Kentucky is killing Texas A&M early with their press offense going from the top of the floor to the backside finding quickly. A couple of threes, now he's got fouled off that action and Buzz Williams will have to think about, do I continue to press Kentucky? Yeah, I was gonna say, what do you do? You call your press off and get your half court defense. Oh my God! Right down the boulevard, Hagens is hungry. Wow, what a power attack by Ashton Hagens who has struggled over the last eight or nine ball games Turning it over four times a game, but just playing with instincts, trusting his training. Like Marty talked about, we're a downhill team. Hagens went downhill. That's a good point, Jimmy. To, to Marty's point, Kentucky's doing exactly what Cal wants as Mitchell hits a fading away three, and AM suddenly is four for four from three point range. They, they are a 30% three point team in conference play, the team in what? Not tonight, not so far. As strange things happen on Super Tuesday. Yes. I'm just glad to parachute into it, but odd things have been happening in the SEC. Tyrese Maxey, oh goodness! Montgomery going high. The value of Kentucky, Jason, getting the ball on the rim cannot be overemphasized tonight. The reason why I say that A&M, they bull rush the ball. They surround that ball when it's coming at you in the paint. Therefore, those offensive rebound Opportunities will be there. Nebo, and they're going to call an offensive foul on Nebo downstairs. <laughs> the start for Kentucky. The three ball is falling, and the follow up dunks are falling. Emmanuel quickly, the best offensive player that this league has to offer right now as we head down the pipe towards March. Kentucky finding the back of the side of the play in the press offense, and the dunks of Kentucky. Ashton Hagens. The rise and the hard release at the rim, followed by E.J. Montgomery off an offensive rebound. Big Blue Nation rolling early. This is the SEC on ESPN. Welcome back to Super Tuesday. When we were at shoot around today, Jimmy, John Calipari kept discussing the stride stop. Explain what that is because he had me thoroughly confused. Well, Texas A&M is so good at drawing charges. When Kentucky drives the ball tonight, if they're driving the ball and they pick up their dribble, they want to stride, and now they have a pivot foot so they can pivot around and continue to keep the play in line. Stride stops or jump stops to avoid the charge for, night for Kentucky, a big part of this game for the Wildcats. Our producer, Scotty Matthews, just said that looked like the hokey pokey, and I almost punched you right in the face with this microphone. Hey, hey, you made it through the battle, brother. Hey, look like Cooter Brown dance. <laughs> hey, Marty, that was a great job following him with the microphone, by the way. That's not easy to do now. Good stuff. 
So look, that's been important. What what you were showing everybody, Jimmy, is important to Kentucky's transition and ability to break this press, which has been a problem for them in the past. Yeah, it, it is, because Texas A&M, there's the back side of it again. Oh, Jason, that's a great play by Jackson to tip it back into play. The team in white is so good at going towards the ball when you drive it at him and trying to take charges. Kentucky has to play off of jump stops tonight or stride stops, like I talked about, to keep their pivot foot alive and keep the ball moving. Neither team coming out of that timeout had missed a three. Combined seven for seven. That block was the first miss from three of the game. Off the spin, that's a travel against Jonathan Aku, the fifth turnover for AM. We talk a little bit about Buzz Williams. He is a Texas native. His coat is off already tonight. The effort he has created for this Aggies team in a season that could have been lost is impressive. Absolutely. And the, the growth that his team has had in terms of their personality, their buy-in, their trust, their belief in Buzz Williams has just accelerated over the last 60 days. This is a guy that if you don't want to work, you don't want to do all the things that you're asked to do, you're not going to play for Texas A&M. It's been a long, slow, gradual pulling his guys along, but now they're leading their self-coaching. And uh, right now to me, John Calipari or Buzz Williams is your SEC coach of the year. Who would you pick of those two right now? I, I think it's a toss-up. I, I love the job Calipari's done because in November, they look like an NIT team after losing to Evansville. And now they're going to be a top three or four seed in the NCAA. Could win the whole thing. Buzz Williams picked 12th. They could finish as high as fourth. I can make a great case for both of them. That's going to be a block on the drive by quickly. For Buzz Williams, here is the largest piece of evidence for him to be SEC Coach of the Year. I mean, this team before the season wasn't very highly thought a couple of transfers come in he's trying to build something year one you don't expect much 12th in the league and as you said they could end up as high as fourth they've gone from the initial net ranking that came out texas a&m was dead last out of all the power five schools with a net ranking of 281 they were 100 spots lower than any other power five team they have improved from 281 to 117 that's the growth of this aggies team another dunk Yes, sir. E.J. Montgomery spikes it. But to your point, I, I had Texas A&M with Jay Billis in early December. They played against Texas down in Fort Worth, and they looked like they didn't have energy. Yeah. They didn't look organized at that point. And what Buzz Williams has done to not only keep this thing together, but to develop it and, and build it as a possible postseason team, NIT-wise, or maybe the NCAA tournament if they win the SEC, it's been impressive. Jason, the, the, the talent level has not changed since you saw it. What has changed is their collective heart, their collective toughness, their collective belief in how Buzz Williams wants them to play. There's a rebound for Quentin Jackson. Buzz Williams is without Wendell Mitchell right now, who went out with two personal fouls. So the freshman, Andre Gordon, has come in. Jackson. This is a regression to the mean, as the statisticians call it. Crowd trying to get into this thing off the drive and kick to the corner. That was short for quickly. O'Hagan gave up the three for a drive and kick. This is an NBA possession right now for Kentucky. Wow. And the three for Maxi. Finished off with a guy that will be in the NBA sooner than later. That Kentucky ball touched all sides of the floor multiple times. John Calipari said he's been hearing from Brad. He's been hearing from his family. He's been hearing from other people around the country. Why don't you shoot more? And he said, that's not the way we play when we're at our best. They are right now, though. They said it's interesting. They, Kentucky's shooting almost 36% from the three-point line in conference play. That's a, that's a winning number. They just don't take very many. They make five or six a game. That was a long stride stop. Long stride right stop. Ashton Hagens. Another kick for a three, and that one rims out. The rebound for AM and Miller. Of AM's best defensive possession of the game. They really had those elbows clamped down, tighten those gaps, forcing Kentucky into a jump shot. Where's the offense need to come from here for AM with this lineup? Yeah, but you could ask Buzz, and he'd probably give you the same answer. I'm not really sure. They keep their offense simple, AM does, and they design it interesting enough to make sure rebounders are in place on the backside. It's an interesting concept. Quickly took it away. 
Hagen still in the lane. One more touch pass, and the shot wouldn't go down on the weak side for Maxi. It felt like if that ball had gone down, Buzz was going to have to take a timeout. Because you could just feel all the momentum with Big Blue. Jackson got it for two. That's just a very simple play. They're not going to run five or six back cuts and passes. Iso elbow, let the guy drive and get your rebounders in position if there's a miss. John Calipari trying to get acknowledged from the sideline. Testing the limits of the coach's box. And a whistle on a drive by Hagens. The crowd didn't like it. John Calipari is a little bit angry, or maybe a lot. We'll find out after this. Time. Home of the 12th man, Johnny Football and the Midnight Yell. But there's a buzz in the air for basketball. Buzz Williams has a history of demanding through production that football towns pay attention to hoops, too. See Blacksburg, Virginia, home to Inter Sandman, Michael Vick, and the Lunch Pail defense. In his final season, Buzz took the Hokies to within a bucket of the Elite Eight. And here in Aguilar, he wants to take the 12th man to the Final Four. Talked to Buzz Williams today at Shoot Around, and he told me he likes football a whole lot more than he likes basketball, and he's pretty good at what he's doing in hoops. I'm here with Jimbo Fisher, of course, the head coach of the Texas A&M Aggies football team. How do you describe the excitement that that man has injected into this university for basketball? Well, I think his energy level. I mean, they've taken his personality. He loves what he's doing. You can see it. The players love it, and the people here love it. I mean, they feed off his energy. I know that you guys went and did some speaking together recently. What did you learn about him as you heard him speak? And I mean, he's a very well-driven guy. Like all successful people, he has a plan for what he wants to do. He knows how he wants to do it. And he's very well organized. He's very intelligent. So, guys, Jimbo is one of the brightest football minds in all the world. But let me read some. Let, let me read some statistics. What year was it? About 1985. Three. 1983. All right. Five sounds better. West Virginia, first team All State, conference player of the year, averaged 22 and a half a night. You still get out here and play noon ball? We used to. That was that was back in the old Nick Saban days. That was the NBA there. We don't anymore. We, we just go work out. <laughs> Back in the day when Jimbo was on Coach Saban's staff at LSU, they played basketball almost every day at noon. And Jimbo tells me he never lost. The reason that he never lost is what? We were the best team. Nick and I were always on the same team. And we always had, we picked up one other ringer and we were good. <laughs> and now we have the secret. He was on Saban's team and Saban would not lose. He would in fact hit the reset button if he was losing, hold gentlemen. On, hold on on that. He, 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 I did the score and he didn't do the score. <laughs> All right, you heard it here first. Coach Saban watched Jimbo fill it up in noon ball, gentlemen. Hey, I love, I love that he said we picked up one other ringer as they were two ringers, the two ringers in the first place. He needed one more. And they got one more dude. Pretty successful deer hunter too from what I understand. That's what I've heard, yeah. Doing a good job here at AM in football, too. And uh, the scoring has leveled off a little bit, as we expected in this game. It's not tremendous shooting sides, and they've calmed down some. They dig on Nebo, he lost it, and no third chance coming as it's out of bounds. Hey, coming up next on ESPN, NC State hovering right squarely smack on the bubble at North Carolina, which is very sick of losing close games. You can watch that live on the ESPN app, 9 Eastern time. Tar Heels have won eight of the last nine in I, that I series. Had, I had North Carolina twice last week. Okay. And I, 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 I know they're losing. I still love their vibe. I love the joy that they're playing with. I love the feeling around that team. They're going to clip somebody. They're not going to be in that NCAA tournament unless they win the ACC tournament, but they could very well keep someone out like an NC State. And North Carolina is, they're continuing to just hang in there, man, and fight and stay together. And that's so hard to do, Jason, when the losses just keep coming. As I was thinking about what's on our airwaves tonight with Carolina coming up, it, it kind of struck me that I don't know that you want to play North Carolina in the ACC tournament. There, there's enough talent there to scare you. Uh, there, there is, and they got that one dude, Cole Anthony, that can you know get you 25, 30, or beyond. You just got a lot of juice, a lot of stuff about him. They got to get healthy. Garrison Brooks couldn't play at Louisville on Saturday because of the flu. But, but, but you're right. That's 
It's the least talented Roy Williams has had in a long time. Only Cole Anthony and Garrison Brooks would play on a normal North Carolina talented team this year, but there's enough there to cause somebody a problem. NC State better be ready tonight. Montgomery the kick. Hagen sets up Juzang, and that's short. Rebound for AM. All right, who's that team in the SEC that could surprise you in the SEC tournament? I, I think it's Alabama. The, the way they play, the style they play, they can really score. That's what jumps out at me, a and in their three-game winning streak. They went and won at Alabama, and that's an Alabama team under Nate Oates that one of the faster teams in all of college ball, and their volume three shooting can be a real problem. Wendell Mitchell. That's a tough three, and Kentucky makes it one and done. And for two teams that shoot a lot of free throws, we've only seen four combined so far, and they're going to get an offensive foul against Hagens. Even the big guy for Kentucky understand the importance of driving the basketball tonight, Jason, and playing off of a jump stop or a stride stop. Watch E.J. Montgomery. He's going to punch the paint and watch right here. That's a big stride stop. He gets rid of the basketball and avoids the charge. John Calipari told his guys today, A&M plays every possession defensively with the intent of drawing three charges. Off of two feet, off of stride stops, we will be okay. So why is that specifically so important in the game tonight? Well, because if not, and you go down there and just lower your head and bull rush the rim, A&M is going to draw charges all night long. And it's, it, a and is built defensively very similar to Texas Tech, and Kentucky is very familiar, obviously, with the Red Raiders having one down there. Watch out. Kentucky throws it away to turnover number three for the Wildcats. Lead is nine. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. And in part by Zaxby's. Hand breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order only at Zaxby's. Let's find one of those on the way to Houston tonight. I'm in. I'm in. Loaded Saturday here on ESPN, and you see 10 Big Ten teams right now. Purdue has launched itself off the bubble the wrong direction. They were at 11, which would have been a tie of the record. You see the SEC down at four. Uh, fair at this point for the it, SEC? It is as of tonight right now, yeah. but there's three teams sitting right there in the first four out or the next four out that could obviously play their way in. That SEC tournament is going to be crucial for three or four ball clubs, and the Big Ten with a crazy number of 10 could grow to 11. I, and I think the National Player of the Year race is as wide open this late as it's ever been. I'm going to go with Luca Garza because what he's doing in that league with all those teams in the NCAA tournament, why, did, why, why doesn't everyone play as hard as Luca Garza? You've seen him. I saw him Thursday, and uh, it, legitimately for a big guy to play 40 minutes, when he plays the minutes he's playing like they are the most important minutes of his lifetime. Yep. It's 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 impressive stuff. Hey, NBA Wednesday doubleheader we got to tell you about here. James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and the Rockets against John Morant and the Grizzlies, who's been watching some Kentucky basketball, by the way, according to his social media. Then Celtics are in Salt Lake City against Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz. Stephen A's pregame Sports Center at 7 on ESPN. You're the crossover guy. Break the break those games down for us. Give <laughs> well, us a full I, scouting report. I, I will say this. There, there is, wow, there's a power move. That's what they even have to have. That's when they're at their best. Powering the ball around the rim. High percentage looks, and Nebo sending a message to Nick Richards, running from offense to defense. Oh, offensive foul against Quickly. Watch Nebo here. Yeah, he's a power guy, man, and, and this is coming off of a career high 21 against Mississippi State front line. But then on the retreat down the floor, he's getting right in the ear of Nick Richards. And in years past, I think Nick Richards would kind of shrink from that moment. Nick Richards will not shrink. You may have just sent a message to Nick Richards if you're Josh Nebo that you might not want to send. The look on Richards' face almost was, if you're going to caption it, keep talking. Yeah. Go ahead. See what happens. That rattles down. Savion flag with nine for AM. He's a 32.5% three-point shooter, and he's perfect tonight. Kentucky's defense, though, is so active. It's forcing a non-three-point shooting team to have to take some guarded threes in this game. Look, you said it earlier before you shirked your crossover responsibilities. Turnovers have been an issue for Kentucky. That's four straight possessions with a turnover. Yeah, it has. And with three point guards on the floor for heavy minutes, that just should not be the case. And whether it's Maxie or Hagens, 
Sometimes they dribble without a purpose by putting the ball by their side instead of out in front of them trying to go somewhere. Dance with that ball a little bit too much, and turnovers now by Kentucky has allowed A&M right back in this game. Flesh that out, the dribble without a purpose. What are people looking for to see that? Watch where the ball is in, in, in comparison to where the offensive player's body is. If the bounce is right beside their body, they ain't going anywhere. That ball's got to be out in front of them, man, getting the ball out in front of the defender. Flag spiked it down to the ground, collected it. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's something. That should be a travel or double dribble or something, and, and Steven Anderson's right on top of it. It was clever. If that was legal, you'd start seeing people do it in our next game. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> but it's a, that's one of the original 13 rules of the game. You, you leave the feet. And there was no contact by the defender, and, and that's a, you just can't do that. He looked like he was playing jacks. He didn't <laughs> scoop anything up, but that's what it looked like, right? <laughs> When's the last time you played jacks? Look, I sit on the doorstep all the time in Chicago and just play jacks in the neighborhood. <laughs> We're building communities, Jimmy. Hagans with the pass. That shouldn't be a shooting foul, you wouldn't imagine. We'll see. Jason, did you see what Higgins did? He, I was he, playing Jacks. I yeah, he it. got well, he got into the teeth of the defense, but he couldn't get all the way to the rim, so he stopped off of two feet and forced a foul coming from behind. It's a just it's a huge key for Kentucky tonight because of how AM plays. And overall for Kentucky, just dealing with ball pressure and full court pressure has been an issue at points this season for the Wildcats, who are 22 and 5 and have not lost since the first day of this month on a Saturday in Auburn. Montgomery attacking. Second chance coming off the kick out. And a three for quickly. That is tremendous. And I'm talking about E.J. Montgomery. To drive the basketball, to get a big boy rebound, and the kick out, the hockey assist for Montgomery. What does Kenny Payne say to him, the assistant coach? He says, go get every offensive rebound. Yeah, man, just do, do what you can do. Trust your instincts, trust your training. Montgomery makes a play out of the corner, and then a play off the offensive glass. Big Blue up seven. My instincts say this is a break. <laughs> E.J. Montgomery makes a play out of the corner, misses the, a shot at the rim that involved a collision, but he's strong enough and tough enough, determined enough, Jason, to come out of there the fourth offensive rebound by E.J. Montgomery in this game was the toughest one he had to get. Okay. Doug Schaus came over here to tell us what the team foul situation is. The scoreboard uh, is dealing with a little bit of a, an event issue. They're planning for a different event. They, they have it up what? for uh, women's basketball as opposed to the men's basketball game. Great women's basketball team here at yes. AM, by the way. So they, 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 it's set up for the women's game to to play for, with quarters, I'm assuming. Yeah, I believe e that. Either way, both teams have 16 fouls. That's correct. Don't believe everything you read. Back to the crossover question you asked me. Sure. You're finally going to answer? There is no Ja Morant or Zion Williamson in this year's draft. The guy that I would take number one with yep. all the uncertainty of Anthony Edwards and the LaMelo ball and the internet, I would go with Obi Toppin. He's the safest, best producing guy in the draft, I think, from Dayton. That's really? who I would pick as number one. One and done there for Kentucky. And AM suddenly, Jimmy, after Kentucky threatened to put this game away early, up 10, has now seen the lead cut in half. I'm telling you, the, the collective pulse that they play with, Kentucky's going to have to put them away. AM's not going to walk away in this game. That's a block out of bounds by Richards. Hey, Saturday, we told you about some of the games. It's a full day of college basketball, two big games. Six Eastern time, Duke only a half game back of Louisville in the ACC standing. Sonic Blockbuster then in the Big Ten. Jay Billis, Dan Schulman will have the call for you. Uh, that game previously was going to be Jason Benetti and Jan Dockett, but game day happens to everybody. And so Dan and I will be in Reno for San Diego State and Nevada. <laughs> But that's a heck of a ball game you've got. It's a great ball yeah. game. Yeah, I'm excited to I'm excited to live the Mountain West Monday life like you used to. Oh, that was phenomenal. back in the day with Carp. And Didn't you used to watch me when you were in college when I was doing Mountain West Mondays? That's true. We had big parties at Syracuse University at our at our home uh, and watched Jimmy and, and Bob, Bob Carpenter, Carpenter, Dave Pash. Yes. And, and eventually as well, we had everybody was assigned a team. Actually, it was a big yeah. thing. We had like 15 people at the at the parties. It was all of our friends. Turnover 
will not be called. Buzz Williams wanted that to be a turnover, but they'll give the two. Buzz said, what about that call over there? It looked like that one. And Same thing. Yeah. It's just really simple offense by a &M, trying to ISO Nebo. Montgomery Richards have no part of it. There's Nebo calling for it. He goes to work decisively and blocked by Montgomery. Great help by E.J. Montgomery. Yeah, that leads the Kentucky man. It, it's one thing on film. It's another thing in person trying to finish above those dudes. Oh, Hagens is testing everybody's patience in the crowd. A near travel. This is a jump pass, still with 12 to shoot. Off the deflection, Hagen floats it up, and Richards is defended by the rim, and this will stay with Kentucky for the moment, but they will talk it over. It is A&M basketball, but Buzz didn't get the menu uh, memo. He's still wearing <laughs> or the out, menu. Uh, oh, yeah, he didn't get anything. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today from the menu. Menu, Wendy's. Yeah, there, there. Wendy's on the brain. Back to you, Jason. Kevin, thank you. We look forward to hearing you all at halftime as Buzz Williams has made another foray out onto the floor after really working Todd Austin and Steven Anderson, two of our three officials, during play enough that he's perspiring quite a bit. That, that's who he is. I think that SEC player of the year race <laughs> is down to, two, down to two guys. Unfortunately, they can split the votes between Emmanuel Quickly and Nick Richards. The last break, Buzz Williams, for 44 seconds, was in the ear of Doug Shouse. Now, you got a terrific crew tonight with Doug Shouse, Todd Austin, and Steven Anderson. And I think maybe in the back of their mind, they think may, maybe, we may, maybe we missed one. So our fuse, as a good officiating crew will do, will be a little longer right now with Buzz Williams, who honestly has had a question of two or three calls in this game so far. Now John Calipari saying, I want to flop. Well, Buzz looked like he was trying out for a Broadway show over on the sideline there. He just became a <laughs> meme with that dance, the Bronx cheer of dances yeah. on the foul. <laughs> I, I can make a strong case for both these guys to be coach of the year, and I, I think it comes down to these two. I really do. John Calipari is so good subtly motivating his team and sometimes not so subtly just getting the most out of all of his guys who have high aspirations in the future. Oh, wow. That, Hagen's that. no. Buzz Williams working hard. Oh, my goodness. That's a vertical right there. Jason, you, you cannot play better scrambling team defense than what Texas A&M just did. They had three or four closeouts where the entire team was moving on the fly to the ball. Tight, low closeouts, forced Kentucky to make three or four passes. That was outstanding defense. The catch and shoot, J.J. Chandler wouldn't go, and here comes Buzz again. I mean, he's going to, the jumping ability is top notch. He's in terrific shape. Yes, you know, on his is. daily planner, there's a section in every day for him to, to get in there and work out. This guy's on top of everything. I mean, everything. Got the nickname Buzz because he was buzzing around his college program as Sestina drills a three, and that's big for Kentucky. Nate Sestina, the transfer. Jason Kentucky avoiding the charge in this ball game to perfection. All of them are driving the ball under, com under control, making passes off of two feet or that stride stop, finding the backside shooters. I was going to say, you said it early with that stride stop. It's become a major component, as John Calipari expected. Chandler early in the shot clock, missed the three, and here comes Kentucky off its first points from the bench. Bam. Oh, another stop for Montgomery right on the baseline. Those bigs in Kentucky, man, they, they get out in front of the play. Another great example of Montgomery not running even with the ball or even with his defender, getting out in front of the play and finding the backside rim dunk. How about the growing confidence and the better shape that E.J. Montgomery's in right now? Young man out of Florida. Gordon misses the three, and A&M has found its shooting stroke early in this game and lost it since as Kentucky calls a timeout with its largest lead. Yeah, Cal's going to make sure he gets the shot he wants right now. and No reason to carry that timeout forward with him. You're up 36-25, to 25, a chance to expand it right before the half. 
Emmanuel quickly once again, 16 points already, Jimmy. Well, he got off the hot start. Texas A&M was pressing, and Emmanuel quickly just spotted up on the bottom side of the screen multiple times early. And the, gr the rim is growing every time Emmanuel quickly knocks down a shot the first four or five minutes. And he's been so good, man, at catching that thing with his feet lined up at the rim. He's getting it off quick. Hot hands as a shooter. Emmanuel quickly right now defines that. He's got four of those six threes for Kentucky. A&M just one for its last nine after opening four for four. Uh, Jimmy, they looked around the room about a week ago and they said, who, who scored 25 points in a game? And a bunch of people raised their hand, four guys, and quickly didn't. And some of the guys said, oh, you haven't yet? And then he went out and did it on Saturday against Florida. Like, wish it, and it becomes true right now for Emmanuel quickly. Well, that's, that's the only guy or the one guy that John Calipari has that has road fight, road confidence, road swagger, road chokehold, whatever you want to call it, road dog. It, this team is driven by Emmanuel quickly's heart and toughness. Make no mistake about it. This is his team, number five in blue. Here he goes again, hanging. Couldn't finish, but an offensive rebound. Hagen's got caught in the air. Oh. That got five hole in a major collision with 7.2. That was completely unavoidable out of the scramble, and it looked like Montgomery got the brunt of it running into Chandler. That was a Jimbo Fisher linebacker meeting the running back in the hole. Thankfully, they're both up and okay, because that was a that was a shot delivered and absorbed. Like you said, unintentionally, just scrambling for the ball. Bam, right there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. No, there. I mean, no. Yeah, that's the A-gap. Mm. And thank, honestly, thank goodness Montgomery straightened up because it wasn't as direct of a hit yeah, right. face to face as it could have been. Kentucky doesn't get the basket after the Cal timeout. Now the fouls allow Texas A&M two free throws. It goes against Montgomery, and that is the toughest the foul tough you'll call. see E.J. Montgomery get. My, my foul, my, my head fa fouled your head. And a one and one for Josh Nebo, 65% foul shooter. Surprising that there have only been six free throws taken in this game so far, considering how much these two teams get to the line. And a little bit odd that Nebo is the one going to the line as Chandler got blasted by Montgomery. Jason, you bring up a good point. For, because for Texas A&M, they have to have those free throw attempts. The number has to be 24 or 25. Again, they embrace ugly. And part of the ugly offense is however you have to play to get yourself to the line. Kentucky doing a good job so far of defending without fouling. Nebo got the front end. I thought he'd shoot two. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> you listen like Carl Ravitch. Excuse me? You, four or five times a game, uh -huh. Ravitch does the same response. What'd you say? Well, you're talking fast. <laughs> it's good to be with you. <laughs> Absolutely. 36-27, <laughs> your score. <laughs> When, when they when they asked me, do you think I was serious or when, not? When I, they asked me, who do you want yeah. to try to fly in here since Carl Ravitch is sick? Yeah. When the first four guys said no, I was all in on you. Well, you had argued for no play-by-play -play announcer yet again <laughs> before me, so thank you very much. And that's the end of the first half, and possibly the partnership with me and Jimmy. <laughs> The expiration date is soon, but not on this game. It's 36-27, Kentucky with the lead. You are tremendous. What was it? Marty Smith. Okay. He's going to be with Buzz Coach, Williams. you got it under 10 entering the half. You guys played really aggressive, made a bunch of threes. How would you assess the first half performance? Uh, we're in rotation too much defensively. Um, we're not controlling the bounce, and so we're just staying in rotation the rest of the possession. And then when a shot goes up, because we're in rotation, we have no chance to defensive rebound. Somehow we got to control the ball a little better, and we need to play higher on the floor so that if we're about to get in rotation, we can start the rotation higher. The rotation's happening way too late. Extremely aggressive, extremely physical game. How do you describe how hard your young men are playing? I think they try hard. 
Um, they're comfortable with our deficiencies, which says a lot about them. They're trying real hard. I thought we got out of whack a little bit in that second media timeout, and then the last two media timeouts have been okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Buzz Williams, we thank you for your time, and we thank you for your energy. It has been a highly, highly entertaining here in half number one. He's been all over the place, working hard for his guys. Deep halftime report, Kevin Seth and LaFonso have it. Woo! That's what they're saying about those three. ESPN's Road to Champ Week presented by Wendy's as part of the SEC on ESPN. They are swaying in College Station trying to will A&M back against Kentucky 36-27. We thank you for joining us once again. I'm Jason Benetti. He is Andy Warhol contemporary Jimmy Dykes. Marty Smith will join us in a moment. How about Emmanuel quickly and what he's done since December? Well, he's been a terrific player really all over the floor. I mean, we talk about Ashton Hagen's defensively. Quickly's right there with him. Offensively tonight, Quickly's been on fire. He saw a big rim early, Jason, and it just grew from that point on. Just way too easy. Kentucky has had a lot of uncontested open looks against Texas A&M defense that packs it in. They try to close out the shooters. They just haven't got there fast enough tonight. And you look at Manuel Quickly right now, 16 points in the first half, and think about this. He's averaging over 15 points a game in the second half over the last six. He's on track to have a big number tonight. John Calipari said about him, he's playing with less anxiety and more freedom of the mind. And you can see that on the court in his movements. Emmanuel Quickly last year played every possession looking over his shoulder at John Calipari. And he finally got to the point where he said, you know what, I, I, I can't play like that, and has moved on. And from that point on to the start of this year, his game has gone up. Maxi slicing through. He has five now, the freshman from here in Texas. And Kentucky's lead once again, 11. Buzz told Marty going off at the half, we, we got to start guarding the ball better and stay out of rotations. And the very first play by Kentucky, Kentucky, boom, a blow-by drive into a pull-up jump shot. How does that make you feel as a coach? Not very good. Mm. Makes you feel like, was anyone listening to what I said right. at halftime? 15 minutes worth. Similar to our, our cruise discussion at halftime. What was that? <laughs> good to see Montgomery back in the game after the collision at the end of the first half. Higgins whipping his hand back and forth, calling for Richards to pop out. Quickly feeds the post. Somebody's open. It's Hagens on the find for Maxi. Richards tried to punch that in and got it up on the rim, but no go. Boy, he didn't really surrounded Nick Richards. They almost triple teamed the low post. Richards was lucky just to get the ball to the weak side of the floor. I asked you this in the first half. Where's the offense come from for AM? We look at their just their, from the pure number standpoint, the analytics, it's Josh Nebo and Wendell Mitchell. Can Nebo get going against the length of Kentucky? This is Savion Flag late in the shot clock to run it up. Offensive rebound, that's a big part of their game, is down to the paint. Miller couldn't finish, as you see. Kentucky has been so good on second chances, but no need there. Quickly fills it up. Yeah, the trail three by Quickly to run right into the slot. And great recognition by Kentucky to know where that trail shooter was feeling behind. This is such a dangerous Kentucky team. On the verge of seven straight in the win column. It's a timeout A&M off Kentucky's largest lead. Back to the drawing board for Buzz Williams. They presented by Progressive and ladies and gentlemen, Emmanuel Quickly is going off this evening in College Station, Texas. He has entered the SEC Player of the Year conversation. And John Calipari's told me multiple times this season that he has one dog, one guy who's willing to hold himself truly accountable on this roster, and that man is Emmanuel Quickly. I asked Quickly today at shoot around, why are you that guy? He credited his, his parents. He said, it's the way I was raised, Marty. They've held me accountable since I was born, whether it's the trash, the dishwasher. I always had to hold up my end of the deal and be a man. So when I got to Kentucky, it was just no different. I was used to it. Uh, he's a neat story, Marty, and there's great stuff there. And Emmanuel quickly, uh, his father wasn't always on board with the whole basketball thing. There's a great story within the past couple of weeks 
uh, about Emmanuel quickly and how much he and his family have now bonded over basketball and the buy-in from them on what he can become in the future. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's a sponge. The great former Kentucky player, Re Rex Chapman, I had the ple pleasure of being on that staff at Coach Rex back in the late 80s. And remember Rex telling me back earlier in the year that, that he sat down with it quickly and said, listen, dude, we, we need your shot, man. We need your three, we need your floaters, we need you to be aggressive and be that guy. And you know, Manuel quickly knows who to listen to and who not to listen to. And that's part of being grounded with his faith, with his family. And Marty's right, if, if, if Cal has one dog, I talked about in the first half, that's not afraid of any stage, it's number five in blue. No, he's grown and he's grown. He's got double figures every game since December the 21st, but another needless Kentucky turnover, and that hit ahead's intercepted back. It is a four on one, and nobody finished the deal until now. You love it, at least I do as a coach, when both of your bigs fight each other for the ball in transition at the rim. Montgomery and Richards again out in front of the play. Watch this. They fight each other for this lob pass. Man, you love that. Applaud that all day long in the film session tomorrow for John Calipari. The energy, the fight, the want to. And uh, Kentucky just continues to hang on to that double digit lead and grow. And less people wouldn't think you're all in. That was Jimmy Dykes clapping in the background. <laughs> this isn't just a simulation of what a no. coach would do. He was actually doing yeah, it. Yeah, I love that play. Yeah. Just, it just tells you a lot about the energy level and the alertness of those two seven-footers. Yeah, how active they are down low. And we're talking about Kentucky defensively and how active and busy they are always in passing lanes and challenging catches. And they do it again on this possession. And it leads to a foul. I got a question for you after we talk about Sports Center. Are you ready for, for a question just out of the blue? What'd you say? Yeah, cool. Tonight after NC State, North Carolina, John and Zubin have it for you. Tim Legler breaks down a good one in the East. Lewis Riddick at the NFL Combine. Joe Burrow with some choice words about the people who think his hands might be too small to play quarterback. And then road tests for Dayton and Duke, among others, at Sports Center tonight. If, if someone doesn't draft Joe Burrow because his hand measurement was only nine, so something's work. wrong. Something's bad wrong. Well, they didn't watch the college football playoff. Yeah, they didn't, watch, yeah they didn't watch him play. AM's crowd threatening to get into this. Well, if AM's going to get into this, they have to start guarding the basketball and staying out of those defensive rotations that Buzz talked about going in at halftime. Pull up, won't fall, rebound for Mitchell. Good gang rebound by a &M. Four white jerseys surrounding the miss. Mitchell knew he had it. He was backpedaling on a make that didn't even fall yet. It's a nine-point game. A mistake made by Kentucky in transition defense. You got a ball screen set for Wendell Mitchell. And the rise and fire with a quick trigger. Higgins gets hung up. He doesn't even go under. He just runs smooth into the screen and melts. Aggies, gig him. Here we go. I think as a player, it's just, you know, just being out there with my brothers, uh, knowing that I'm going out there 40 minutes and competing against a team that's wanting to beat us real bad. So I just try to go out there and leave it all out there all 40 minutes and just fight for my brothers. That's Ashton Hagens putting in elite effort to win college basketball's highest individual honor, our Wendy's Wooden Watch. His team leads by nine. You saw something in the huddle during the break. Take yeah, this is what Buzz Williams right now. He's talking paint touches right there. That's a big number for Buzz Williams all the time. Turkeys. And the turkeys over here is three stops in a row. And right now they have none for the game, if I'm reading that right. And they're currently on a back-to-back -back stops. The paint touch war is what Buzz Williams is always concerned with. How many times are we getting the ball in the paint versus how many times is Kentucky getting the ball in the paint? And they chart it from one media timeout to the next. I want to know what a perfect shot is because they had one on the board as well. Those would be wide open shots near the rim, which suits their offense. Sestina, extra pass for quickly. Who had a pancake by Nebo? So there's the first turkey for AM in this game. Three stops in a row. 
playing off of bowling, one of your favorite sports, I know. Do they have, they have turkeys in bowling? They do. Three straight strikes is a, a turkey. I, I never knew that. Mm. We're learning something every moment here on Super Tuesday. Nebo on the gas pedal, and he draws a whistle. Active leader in blocks. Welcome to the game. Yeah, you asked me, well, how does a &M get back in this game? Ne Nebo's got to get going. He does defensively right here, just eats up the drive of Emmanuel quickly and then goes right down the next possession and simple offense, Jason, out of Buzz Williams, isolating Nebo, letting him attack the rim, trying to get his team intentionally to the free throw strike. It's huge for Texas A&M. Yeah, they're ninth in the country, A&M is, in free throw attempts to field goal attempts. They get a lot of their offense from the line as Nebo goes one for two. Great story, Josh Nebo. Started his career at St. Francis in Pennsylvania. Got to move back here so his family can see him more in his senior season now for Buzz Williams. Buzz Williams trying to push his defense out right now. The gamble with that is, can you stay in front of the basketball and stay out of defensive rotations on your home floor right now if you're the Aggies? I feel like this might be a pivotal possession. AM has been lingering in that 8 to 10 range and hasn't really driven it beyond that. Well, good gap help by AM. Jackson went around the Got screen, you. and that's an offensive foul. And he didn't play off of two feet, and he didn't play off of a stride stop. He charged right through the defender. And that's one of the few times Kentucky's guards have not made a good lane decision. Yeah, can't think of very many of those no. tonight. So Wendell Mitchell, who's been a marksman tonight, wearing number 11, who just gave up the ball. Bam. Nebo! High to step it down. A really simple play call again by Buzz Williams. Isolate Nebo. As soon as Destina got the match on him, Buzz Williams went to work. Drive and kick and quickly silences the local. I don't care what defense AM is in, zone, man, whatever. You have to be a step and a half or two steps closer to Emmanuel quickly at all times in this game. Kentucky's so good, Jimmy, at that extra pass to find a better look as they did right there. Nebo, offensive foul against Josh Nebo. Now Josh Nebo is such an important part of Buzz Williams' offense. That last possession, keep an eye on Nebo right here. He's gonna get a steal on Nate Sestina. And the over-the-top pass is gonna come. Sestina's trying to front. Nebo just shoves him out of the way. And the pass was perfect, man. The timing of the pass, boom. Hold him off, go get it, bam, finish. Nice job, 32 and one. Tonight on Disney Plus, finding Nebo. And a &M just found him. And they better keep trying to find him, but it's going to be hard because right now he's on the bench. Doesn't help. A couple of fouls on Nebo. They've got three against Wendell Mitchell. Three on Emmanuel Miller as well. Maxi got it right back from Sestino, who's looking past first. Another extra pass to the corner, and again, quickly sinks it. John Calipari doing a great job. This is all lipstick on a pig over here. All this action over here, Jason, yeah. it's just motion. Because what he's wanting to do is get the ball reversed to his shooter in the far corner. All this stuff over here, is not, it doesn't matter. It's about quickly in that far corner. What did we say earlier about him getting challenged to score 25 in a game? He, he just he, did it Saturday. He's done it again today. Is, is he there yet? He is. He he's just got there. It. So he's real close. Very close. Right on it. <laughs> Here comes Montgomery. Oh, nifty yo-yo work by Higgins. And Montgomery lost the handle. All the activity by Kentucky on the right side of the floor. They're just moving the ball and getting Texas A&M, reacting defensively, and then bam. You got you out number on the backside. That step and a half or two closer to Manuel quickly is not in place, and Buzz said, dead gummit. How good are they at going from good shot to great shot? Kentucky? Kentucky. Yeah, very yeah. good. Very, very good. 
As I was saying a little bit ago, guys, Emmanuel quickly, squarely in the player of the year conversation in the Southeastern Conference. I asked him about that today. He said, I try really hard not to pay attention to it, but you can't deny it, how cool it is, so I can't help but pay attention to it. He said, ultimately, it's about the SEC championship for me and for this team, staying grounded, team first, and if I do that, everything else will come. Impressive young man, Emmanuel quickly, and, and you like that. I mean, you want to be chasing something, right? I fight at the line and it's taken in by AM. That's okay. I mean, you can have your eye on that a little bit and still yeah, be improving. Yeah, yeah, yes, but as long as they, like Cal said today at uh, 1130 local time, stick to your training, just play the game. Let the numbers fall where they may. And Nick Richards was leading, leading that SEC player of the year race for a long time and now quickly is right there with him. Right there with him, if not maybe slightly ahead if the vote was tonight. Mitchell for three. Missed that one. He's been the bulk of the offense for AM tonight. And now Kentucky will tap the brakes a little bit up 12. Big game against Auburn coming up Saturday, Tuesday, Tennessee, and then finishing at Florida before the SEC tournament. Quickly got wrangled by Chandler. Kentucky by a dozen tonight. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today. Back on par in the second half with you guys. Uh, who said it was? Honestly, right. Kevin, maybe you're misreading the situation here. <laughs> Sometimes uh, the film does lie, I guess. That's, that's true. You know, what was that? Sometimes the film does oh, lie. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> 50, 50 to 38, Kentucky with the lead here against AM. We'll have ACC play after us, North Carolina State and UNC, and a big game for the Wolfpack right on the bubble fringe. Second chance, Maxi, and he lost it out of bounds. When Kentucky got to the huddle, gentlemen, John Calipari looked at Ashton Hagas and said, one more dribble. That gives you choices, and he always prefers the lob. As we discussed earlier in the game, Hagens is a bit more turnover prone than he was earlier in the season, so that was the very first thing that Calipari said to him. Another thing, look for Johnny Juzang to make his way into the game soon because the guards have played a lot of minutes tonight, and they want to get those guys a breather. Yeah, Marty Hagens has, he has, he has four turnovers again tonight. And that, that number cannot continue if Kentucky is going to be a legitimate threat to go to Atlanta and win the whole thing. Your point guard playing major minutes can't keep turning it over four or five, five times a game. Especially when you have options at that position. You have guys who also alternatively can handle the ball. Right. See where this goes. It's going to AM. Hey, tonight, 9 Eastern time, NC State and North Carolina. It's a big game. We said uh, the Wolfpack are right on the fringe there. They're one of the last four teams in, according to Joe Lenardi, out of the ACC, a road game. And uh, you said it, Carolina's got some talent. That's a loss that would hurt you if you're NC State on the road, considering Carolina's pedigree so far. Uh, yeah, I think if NC State loses that game, they go from in to out tonight because you're losing to a team that is really struggling at the bottom of the ACC, and I'm telling you, Carolina is going to clip somebody. They continue. I, I, I loved. I saw them twice last week. They had a great vibe at Notre Dame in a last-second loss. They had a great vibe at Louisville, although they lost the game. But just watching them play, they have not let go of the rope, and that's so easy to do when you've lost as much as the Tar Heels have this year. Oh, nice hit ahead, Sestina to Maxi for the finish. Great awareness by Sestina. A couple of things Texas A&M could not afford to do tonight to stay in this game was turn it over. Look at the fast break points by Kentucky because of that. 14 to 0. And the Aggies just don't have enough offense to overcome numbers like that. I was going to ask you earlier about the active defense of Kentucky. Who's your most active defensive team in the country as we watch it again? Well, I think Kentucky's right there in the top of that conversation, just off the top of my head. I've seen Baylor this year. Very active defensively is that Baylor squad. Now, now they couldn't handle the load of Doka on Saturday, but I think Baylor's really active. When I watch San Diego State play, I think they're a grown man, tough, active defense. I think Duke at times is really active, and Seton Hall, I think they're still in the top 10 or 12 in terms of defensive efficiency. Those guys get after you now, Jason. That, 
shot blocking ability and length of Romaro Gill. They just have a personality and a, a pulse about them on the defensive end of the four that I really like. But, but none are better than Kentucky in that area. Who's the best defensive team in the Big Ten? Best defensive team in the Big Ten. It kind of depends on where you're playing and, and uh, who the opponent is. Yeah. I mean, we've seen some great defensive games from Purdue this year. They've struggled recently to stop people. Maryland, Rutgers. Maryland, uh, Michigan State Michigan has played State some still, good yeah. defense. I think Illinois, though, is the team to really watch in the Big Ten, considering all the talent they have around. They got basically one of everything as Maxi missed the three. And the rebound for AM down by 12. Is there a national champion out of the Big Ten? That's yeah, tough. I mean, there, there are so many teams between four and seven okay. in terms of seed lines right now. I yeah. would say Illinois and uh, Maryland are the best shots, are the best most shots. talented okay. Okay. teams, at least that I've seen in the Big Ten. Robbie Hummel and I were talking about this the other day. Who's your defensive player of the year in college basketball? I said Marcus Garrett. That's a really good call. You yeah, said Mark Vidal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mar I was going to say Marcus Garrett, Mark Vidal. Uh oh, that's going to get Hagen's. Yeah, he's raised that right arm up right into the chops of Chandler. They may look at this and check and see on a flagrant one possibility. H Hagen's would be in the conversation as well. Yeah, any contact above the in that face area, they're going to take a look at. Watch Hagen's. I, I don't know what he was doing. I don't I like. I don't know. If, I know he didn't mean to, but like, what was he doing? Yeah, like, what was the purpose of? Well, the... yeah, yeah. Was he? Well, I don't know if he's trying to point. I'm not so sure he wasn't trying to point to one of his teammates, like trying to move, like somebody move, move. And... Remember earlier he was doing that with Richards, calling him up the lane line. You're right here. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, oh man, I'm sorry. But he, I think he was directing traffic. He looks up at the shot clock. He says he's calling the ball screen to him, uh, and just yeah. You seldom see that. The reaction by Hagen was so raw and so natural. That's that's got to be incidental, right? I mean, that's. I think it'll be just a, just a common foul. Yeah. You would imagine so. Teams will go huddle up. Lead is 12 for Kentucky. If, if I did that to you, would you say it's incidental? When you did it to me, I don't think it was incidental earlier. We just didn't have the energy and effort out of Tyrese that you need to win a basketball game. Just try to get 1% better every day, try to get better tomorrow, during film and practice, whatever we have. Tyrese Maxey, he is a player, man. A big game player. Tyrese Maxey played with a toughness to win versus just play basketball. Step by step coaching John Calipari and Tyrese Maxey tonight, Jimmy. Well, Maxey is a hooper because he doesn't shoot the three ball consistently, but he finds a way to get the ball in the basket and, and just make plays. And we've seen the shooting of Emmanuel quickly tonight. Hagens is a guy that can defend you and drive downhill in the channel in the pipe and this guy is just a ball player and NBA scouts love the the potential of this kid but he is still a work in progress and that, there, there's no let up on John Calipari towards Tyrese Maxey he's going to push prod until the finished product or as close as he can get before this season's over and his eyes are on Maxey every single second well it, it's interesting to watch that as you say that number one if you come to Kentucky you better be ready to be coached number two the range of coaching from zero to ten and then sometimes to eleven yeah uh, John Calipari hits all those little steps in between with Maxey well he's uh, you know he's brutally honest with his guys and if you're Kentucky there's no place to hide as a player and, and Cal's not going to hide for you. He's not going to hide the deficiencies. He's going to talk open about it. He's going to be honest with you with your evaluation with him one-on-one -on -one in the film sessions. And he, he, I think one of his greatest traits, Calipari, is he holds those guys accountable every single day in every rep, in every possession. And he does not let them off the hook. Never, not one time. You don't come to Kentucky for affirmation. That's the bottom line, guys. You come to Kentucky to be torn down and re rebuilt 
as a team, as a unit, so that the best version of you thereby contributes to the best version of the unit. And to me, it reminds me so much of being around Alabama football as much as I am. The way Nick Saban operates and the way John Cal Calipari operates with their kids is so strikingly similar. Don't come here if you want to be patted on the butt all the time. Come here because they're going to make you a pro. That's a tremendous point by Marty. And, and we got treated to a second Marty Smith essay there, by the way. That was that was essay worthy. There's I, a I, lot more where that came from, Jay. <laughs> I've had four today counting the essay on the drive over for shoot around and the essay on the drive home from Torchy's Tacos. That's they, four. You guys went to Torchy's without me. Yes, we did. That's fantastic. Riding with Marty is like being on the Marty and McGee show. It's just it's a TV show the whole time you're riding around campus. And I'm, I'm still not sure what color the suit is tonight. Well, we know what color it's the shoes are. It's chocolate brown. Chocolate brown. It's chocolate brown. Just look. Just look at this. Where's my camera? Let me try to find it. It's up there somewhere. There you are. Yeah, Okay, right I got one right here. Okay, look. So I got the chocolate brown suit, which yep. is which is just, I mean, it is fly. I got the I got the motorcycles on the interior here. Wow. All right. I got the midnight fives that I have paired with it with, ladies and gentlemen, the gold tongue. It's a great look. It's a fantastic look. <laughs> Folks behind me did not call, call that. I'm just going to make sure that. that I don't pull my pant leg up far enough where you can see my uber pale translucent leg. And you're, right. sure, it's, you're, you're sure it's chocolate brown. Chocolate brown, yes. Don't, don't start mentioning emojis, Jimmy Dykes. That would be unfortunate television. <laughs> oh, we wouldn't dare do that ever. <laughs> Other than during the break, all night long. It's a great, I love the gold there. That's a nice little touch by yeah, Marty. Motorcycles. Do you have a motorcycle? Marty? I have. A, I do not have a motorcycle, no. Okay. I should. have one. You do. Well, are you, if you ask me. Sure. Yes. Jimmy, it's do you have a, a motorcycle? It's a 1975 Honda 50cc mini bike. Still in perfect condition. It's a mini bike. My favorite Christmas gift of all time for my mom and dad. Is that a fit? Is that like Lloyd Christmas? Uh, I and know. Harry when they're riding through the wilderness <laughs> in the freezing cold. So you're saying there's and their a chance. snot freezes to their face. It's a classic Honda 50 CC mini trail is what it's called. And it just sits so you don't ride it. No, I, I, I still ride it. Oh, you do. I have. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I ride that, that, that thing. What do you have inside your jacket? You got motorcycles too? I've got, you just uh, got the light Express. That's the difference in <laughs> me and Marty. <laughs> Express menswear slim. Express. Actually, it was Express. Uh, what's the store when you, they sell the, the stuff they can't sell? Uh, the, it's not the resale store. There's something else. Oh, goodness, at the rim to make it an 11-point game. And Jackson on the comeback trail. The outlet. The, the Express the outlet store outlet store that's my finest shopping it's fantastic it's only 11 point game I'm, I'm really impressed with the fight of AM's defense watch how they move on the flight of the ball collectively it's, it's really impressive how all five guys are in sync and how hard Kentucky's had to manufacture their looks tonight and they've done a good job about it Jimmy I love that you're discussing the fight in Texas A&M that truly is the biggest difference of the Buzz Williams era here in College Station he actually said before the season ever started we may not win a whole lot of games early on in the SEC but if we learn to fight and we learn to compete we're going to pick some games off and they've shown that throughout this season they've improved so dramatically and they will not quit look at that man losing his mind over there on the right of your screen he never gives up i mean he's physically experiencing every moment in this game on the sideline do i need to get my chart back out again and talk about talent and heart and where a m is on that scale the heart's through the roof right now and they just took a charge Look at this guy. <laughs> Got the bow and arrow yeah. and the spin out. I'm telling you, man, they are they are in for the fight. And Kentucky better understand that with 444 to go. Because Buzz Williams and his guy, they're gonna push and shove until the job gets done. Maybe it's not this game, but he's gonna push and shove until the job gets done at Texas AM in terms of basketball. He's a Texas guy, grew up in the state. He's a former AM assistant from the NCAA tournament days in the 2000s and a turnover there that he is not happy about a lack of a foul on. And Todd Austin pauses on the way up and gives Buzz a quick stare down. 
Kentucky move the ball, drive it, take open threes if you can find quickly on the floor. He gave it up right there. Got it back off the shot fake and kick to the corner. And the rebound for Flag in a 10-point game. AM still with a chance tonight against Kentucky, which has won six straight. JJ Chandler, a oh, big hit. I'm telling you, I talk about it in the open. The collective heart of Texas A&M, to me, is the best in the SEC. Their talent level is down there somewhere around 11 or 12. But the collective heart, the collective will, the collective fight of Texas A&M just jumps off the screen at me when I watch them play. It all starts with a guy whose pants are too short on the sidelines right <laughs> now and celebrating with a do -si do Buzz Williams and the Aggies. Gig them. Still in the ball game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com and in part by Energizer. Still going. Hey, the transformation continues for teams across the land, and AM is one of them. They lose to Harvard and Fairfield in the non-conference season. They struggled early on this year, didn't look organized at points, and Buzz Williams has infused such vitality into this program and this arena, and they are lit right now. They absolutely are. And then remember this, AM, they do have eight wins this year when trailing at half. So again, they're just a hard team to put away. And Kentucky better understand that. Buzz Williams was sweating profusely in that huddle. I mean dripping, yelling at his young men, imploring them to only allow one shot. We must get stops if we want to win this game. And Jimmy, he said one other thing that I need for you to explain to me. He said straight line everything. What does that mean? Well, he, he's one of his guys to drive the ball hard and get to that free throw line some, being very aggressive with straight line drives. And he also is probably sending the message about eliminate Kentucky's straight line drives. And that's that's at the point you're at in the ball game right now. That, that's exactly what he wanted, Marty, right there. That's drive exactly. that ball with a purpose, man. That's exactly yeah. it. Didn't get the stuff from Mitchell, but they'll get to reset with three minutes to go. He's going with a strong set, just trying to get downhill again. He settles for a pull-up through. Mitchell thought he had it. He missed it wide. Yeah. Can AM stay out of defensive rotations right now? That will keep Kentucky out of the paint, and it will keep Kentucky off the offensive glass. Guard the ball right now if your AM is the most important thing on defense. It's the loudest this building has been all night long behind the energy of the coach and players. Quickly, no, rebound by Montgomery. Good decision by Tyrese Maxey. And I'm not so sure John Calipari wasn't in the back of his ear saying, if you shoot that ball, you're coming out. And m stays with it defensively. Five seconds. Quickly has gone 10 minutes without a bucket. Quickly leans in and scores. What a big time basket by Quickly. Give him a wheelbarrow, man. Wow. Huge shot at a huge time. Just creating something out of nothing by Emmanuel Quickly. A career high 27 for Quickly, who has steamrolled teams the last couple of months. And a whistle against Kentucky and Richards. And I, I judge guards by how you play on the road in a hard game. And this has been a hard game for Kentucky. And Emmanuel Quickly has answered all the questions. The step through of the defense by Quickly was tremendous because they had him clamped down, man. And that second defender didn't quite come and close out the airspace as quickly, and five in blue found it. How about the body control yes. to get to 27? First guy since Malik Monk, back to back 25s after he didn't have any all year long. That road dog that Tyler Hero had last year for Kentucky has now been coming out of the jersey of Emmanuel quickly. And if you don't have that guy that on the road says, bring it on, man. This is my type of game, my type of atmosphere. Hero was that last year. Emmanuel quickly is now that this year for Kentucky. He secured the ball. 
on a lob to the wing, and now Kentucky up by eight with a minute and a half. Maxi hits the post, Montgomery. Off the skip, quickly open, wow. another! That was a final four possession by Kentucky because a and did everything at a brilliant level defensively and Kentucky still fought through it. Richards the challenge, Mitchell knocks it down. It's a nine point game, but Johnny Juzang has called him the killer and quickly has fired big time for Kentucky. Jason, that last offensive possession by Kentucky was, was at a final four level because the defense by a was outstanding, man. They closed down the gaps, a hard tight double team, and for Nick Richards to fan the ball to the weak side and for quickly to get in the shooter slot, bam, right there. And the pass not only was from about 30 feet away, it was right into the shot pocket of quickly, and John Calipari says, that's my guy. The thought bubble might be, maybe we should shoot more threes. They got a, a season high 11 made threes tonight. Well, that's all, and for the most part, with Emmanuel quickly. And Kentucky, they're at the top of the league in terms of three-point percentage. When that three ball is falling, and they're taking good, clean looks, and the, the shot is built from the feet up, and quickly has got his feet set so good time and time tonight. Watch the feet on the replay. Forget about the release. Watch his feet every time. Slightly turned to the left. He gets the shot side of his body lined up every single time. The feet are always just at shoulders width, if not slightly wider, every single time he shoots it. These are all different shots, and the feet always look the same. Emmanuel quickly, man, what a night. You said it though too, along with the feet on those catch and shoot situations, the pass is right into right the shot there. pocket on every one of those. Good passing teams are good shooting teams. Bad passing teams are bad shooting teams. Career high 30 for Emmanuel Quickly, who was making his case, his two month long stump speech for SEC player of the year and an exclamation mark tonight. And Nick Richards has just two points and four fouls, and Kentucky looks like it might skate away with a win anyway. And this guy's been so important, and, and he's going to stay important. That ain't going to change, Nick Richards. The numbers aren't there tonight, but the pressure, Jason, that he puts on you at the rim offensively and what he takes away from the rim defensively cannot be ignored. Think about, though, what this game would have looked like just two months ago when AM was three and five. Yeah, it had been for, a blowout. Yeah, it was it was an oasis for yeah. Kentucky and a tough schedule. Instead, for a guy in Buzz Williams who said, let's see if we can change some opinions this season. After an early struggle, this has become a very difficult, rigorous game tonight for Kentucky. The honesty of Buzz Williams with his guys finally resonated with, you know what, coach, we're, we're tired of being told by the outside that we're not any good. And they just continue to slug and fight and work, and they push Kentucky hard tonight. They're going to have a lot to say about the SEC championship race for the regular season title. There's the drop off and a hammer from Nebo. Yeah, absolutely they will. They're capable of winning any one of those games on the schedule, teams that need them desperately right now. And again, you're trying to stay over 500 so you can be eligible for an NIT and eligible for a dry cleaning as well. <laughs> But <laughs> he looks like he was just on a log flume ride. <laughs> Who it's <coaches>? amazing. <laughs> he, he started, I think he started with the jacket, then the vest came off, and the game goes to overtime. Uh, I don't know what would happen next, but uh, he knew what he was unleashing on the world. He had the wry smile on his face when the vest was starting to come off. Yeah. And, uh, but look, that's not eyewash over there. That guy has done a marvelous job building programs wherever he's gone. Yep. And as Marty said earlier, at a football school, he did it at Virginia Tech. And you can see the stepladder here at A&M. This one's not over as yet, although that will go a long way. Nebo called for the foul with 39 and change to go. Speaking of Marty, but Buzz was so complimentary of Marty's book today. Had a long conversation about it. And uh, Buzz mentioned that he's got a, a copy of mine up in his office right now that he's starting to read. And by, by the way, next Tuesday night, we'll be in Lexington, Kentucky for our Super Tuesday game, yep. Tennessee at Kentucky. And we're going to have a book signing right there uh, between 
the Hyatt and Rupp so, Arena. Somewhere so in that convention center area, we're going to have a, a book signing, and there'll be some books there for sale uh, yep. that are that the, the books it's available for order right now. Yep. And uh, we're putting together a book signing before that Tennessee Kentucky game next Tuesday night within that Rupp Arena. Uh, Hyatt lobby area. So well, look for, make sure you watch for that if you're a Kentucky fan absolutely. coming to the game. Will you do a dramatic reading in the final seconds here? Oh, we don't have time for that. Oh, we don't? No. There's always time for a dramatic <laughs> reading. We have time. I'm told we have time. <laughs> I'll let you do that. Jimmy, I, I appreciate you mentioning what Coach Williams said about my book Never Settle earlier today. It, it was amazing. That man's had a night, too. Flags made a lot of shots tonight. All I know is I got to write a book now. You do. If I'm going to join this crew, I got to go get a on this crew. You are lagging behind. <laughs> Where's my book deal? That's where Rabbit is tonight. He's working on his book. He's on page 20. <laughs> I will say though, it, it, as Coach Williams was discussing it, I, I almost felt like he was out of body. I couldn't believe that he was speaking to me about me and, and the kind words he said about my journey and the value and the power of vulnerability and the willingness to be vulnerable. He, it was Buzz, an amazing moment. Marty, Buzz is a reader, and he reads three or four books at a time. I believe he carves out still. The last time he showed me his day planner, it was an hourly minute planner, and it's about 45 minutes. I believe he still starts his day off with multiple things that he reads. He'll, he'll text me every now and then something that... You know, he thinks that I'd appreciate, but he, there's no there's no doubt he's going to build this thing the right way. And for John Calipari's guys to come in here again, man, another T-shirt giveaway with a BTHO by the student section down here tonight. Kentucky just comes in. They take care of business. They stick to their training, and they walk out of here again with a two-game lead now with only three to go in the SEC regular season race. There will be no stop in the stride. For Kentucky tonight, it's seven in a row in the win column. It comes here in College Station on Super Tuesday, 69-60, your final score. Hey, in all seriousness, thank you for the effort to get here. My man Jason Benetti took a red eye from Arizona last night to Atlanta. Landed in Atlanta this morning at 5 o'clock, flew to Houston, Houston to College Station, took a two-hour nap, didn't eat, came here and did a wonderful job. You guys are great. I'm just glad. Uh, Marty and I did Special Olympics together years ago. You and I have become fast friends. This whole crew, Scott Matthews, D-Mob, everybody. I, I'm just grateful to uh, get to join you for a day. Remember the chart? Yeah. Your heart and your talents top. Thank you. I'm going to go write a book. Marty. Coach, congratulations. Hard fault victory. How do you assess this performance? Well, this was a good game for our team because they scramble up the game. And we hadn't played in that kind of game this year, so this was good for us. Um, foul trouble with Nick. Weren't able to go to him. You got to give Texas A&M credit. They had a great game plan to have them a chance to win this game. Emmanuel quickly, 30 points, a career high, just a tremendous performance. What did you see from him? He shot the ball. He made it. There were two or three plays that he could have passed the other guys for shots. And I had to tell him at halftime, I said, you don't need to be playing to score. You're going to score naturally with how we play. So, But I'm proud of him. I'm going to tell you, you can all say what you want about what he's doing offensively. He's not the same defender that he was a year ago. Like, we, it, it was struggle for him. Now he guards their best player. In what ways has he improved on the defensive end? In fact, get in here. Come here. Come here. He's improved because he's more confident defensively. And there's such a thing, see, there is defensive confidence. Like, I can guard this guy. He also is better at being low, lunging instead of trying to high school slide. He's lunging, and he's playing more physical. I see you laughing at the high school slide. Why is that funny? Man, I done heard that in my two years so many times now. But Coach Crowley, he always wants the best for his players. That's why That's why you come to Kentucky. Uh, but I'm proud of my teammates. You know, they play so hard. You know, we, we gave up a little lead, but, you know, we still play great at the end, so it's good. We were discussing that during the game. You don't come to the University of Kentucky to play for John Calipari for affirmation, for pats on the backside. Right, right. You come here to win and become an NBA player. How has he molded you during your couple years here? Yeah, you, like you said, you come here to work. You know, if you just want to, you know, come shoot a couple balls and, you know, leave after one or two years, that's not why you come here. You come here to develop, uh, and I'm so glad that I came here. It was one of the best decisions of my life. 
30 points, young man, a career high. How, how do you define this performance? Uh, God's been good. You know, uh, all credit to him. Uh, just staying in the gym. My teammates finding me in great spots. Coaches put me in great positions to be successful. Uh, so it's a credit to my teammates, a credit to all that. The Wildcat Dog. We appreciate it, dog. Congratulations, yes, brother. Sir. Guys. How great was Emmanuel quickly. Marty, thank you very much. First 30 for Kentucky since Shea Gilgis Alexander a couple of years ago. With offense like that, Kentucky can not only get to Atlanta, they can win the whole thing. Impressive tonight. He's Jimmy Dykes, Marty Smith, our entire crew. We say farewell. Jason Benetti from College Station, 69-60. UNC-NC State coming next. First, Kevin Nagandi and the guys. Coach, coach, take it away. <laughs> <laughs>